parents of teenagers. Parents of teenagers come to me all the time. You know, I have my, uh, my son. He just doesn't listen to me anymore. Can you talk to him? Like I have some prescription drug that I carry with me that, uh, you know, oh, you know what it is? I'm going to, the sun comes over, I'm going to be like, <sighs> and all of a sudden, he'll be this amazing kid. <laughs> you know, if, but if you just talk to him, no, 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 no. What if you talk to him? And where were you when there was time to talk to him? Let me tell you something about, I'm going to talk about parents first a little bit, then I'll talk about couples, and that's the only time we have, two things. Two kinds of fundamental relationships, your relationship with your children, and your relationship with your spouse. So we'll talk about some very basic things in regards to both. When your children are little, when they're little, when they're five, six, seven, two, three, four, you know what the most important thing is? I have five of those, I could tell you. I could tell you. The most important thing to them is your approval. They want to make you proud, man. They want to show you what they did. I'll be on an important work phone call. Important work phone call. And my son will come over, my two-year-old will come over. Abba, 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 Abba. I'm like, okay, hold on. What is it? <laughs> Nothing. I'll go back on the phone and he'll start calling me again. I'll be like, okay, okay, okay. What is it? I want to show you something. What do you want to show me? That is it. <laughs> but you know what I'm supposed to do? Oh my God, that's awesome. Do it again. <laughs> I'll call you back. <laughs> You're supposed to appreciate what your children do. They live for that. They desire that more than anything else. I have three girls. And you know the difference between girls and boys. Boys can't sit still and girls can't stop this. Right? So I pick my girls up from school. One's in first grade, the other's in third grade. I pick them up from school. It's a 25 minute ride back home and what are they doing the whole way? You know what happened today in class? We colored a dinosaur and we did this and that and I was coloring it purple but I decided to put in some green and they're going on and on and on and on and on. And they cannot help themselves. And they cannot stop and I have to pay attention and listen. I have to listen and say, oh, what about blue? No, I did only a little bit blue. <laughs> right? I have to pay attention. And you know why I'm saying all of this? Just one more story on the side just to wake you up a little. I, t I share this story all the time. My, my, my oldest daughter, my eldest, Hosna, she's, uh, when she was younger, she was really into finger painting. So she'd dip her hands in paint and just making a big old mess, right? And she brings this big cardboard to me. And it's a big blob of blue. I don't see anything, right? And she says, Abba, look what I made. And I'm sitting there going, that's awesome, a mountain. And she says, no, it's mama. And I was like, oh. Don't tell mama. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is they live for your approval. Live for it. But those of you that have children that are teenagers, do they get in the car when you pick them up from school and they can't stop telling you about what happened? Does that happen? Now you know what happened in school today? My teacher said this and that and the other and I got an A on my paper. Nope. They're quiet. And you're trying to tell how was your day? It was okay. So what'd you do? Something. Where are you going today? Somewhere. They don't talk. Getting them to talk is like an interrogation at a police station. And they're not saying anything to you. And while trying to ask them questions, they're texting their friend, my dad is asking too many questions today. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know what's up. Did you tell him something? <laughs> what I'm trying to get at is very simple. At a younger age, your children crave your attention. And when they get older, you will crave their attention. But if you don't give them attention when they're tiny, when they come to you with their toys and you say, go in your room, I'm watching the news. The game is on, could you take him please? Come on, I had a long day at work, I don't want to deal with this right now. We have some, we have, I have friends over, it's embarrassing, go to sleep, go get out of here. When you have this attitude towards your children, like they're an obstacle in your path, your job was at work, when you come home, you're on vacation, no buddy, your job began when you came home. That's your job. What you did over there is just to fulfill your real job at home. Be a father, I'm talking to the men here, be a father, spend time with your children. They're not just there, so you, you put them in school, and you come home from work, you just want to go to sleep, you don't want to bother with you don't want to talk to them and actually the easiest way to not talk to them is get them an iPod touch and a, an iPhone 
and get them a computer and a laptop in their own room with high speed internet, so you don't even have to look at their face. They could just be in their room all day Facebooking, finding themselves a new set of parents online. Seriously, be, be a father, be a mother. Don't replace your motherhood and your fatherhood with these things because if you do, when they become independent, you know what happens to most parents? To most of you, your children, they only see you as a bunch of dollar signs walking around. And the only time they come and talk to you, Dad, can I have five bucks? Actually, nobody asks for five bucks anymore, right? It's twenties nowadays. And I know, I know youth, they haven't seen money that small. They don't know fives. Can I have twenty dollars? Can I go to the mall? Can you drop me off? Can I go over to my friend's house? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do the other? When they want something, they come to you. Otherwise, you don't see them. And when they get to a certain age, where they are old enough to make their own little bit of money, guess what? You're not going to see them at all. Because your cash register is no longer relevant. That's no longer relevant. If this is the relationship you are setting yourself up for, you're headed for destruction. We gotta change this now. And the way to change it, and it's gonna be hard for a lot of you to implement this, but we have to be friends with our children. We have to be their best friends. They should enjoy hanging out with us the most, the parents.